there is a, a great diverse mix of uh, plant species in the hedgerow. That's why I like this particular hedgerow because it's got the structural diversity. It's got a huge big ash tree up there, probably the preferred location for a song thrush to be singing its, its song to, to greet the day. And then a lower level down then, the fine white horn tree here. And you might find the, uh, the, the nest of the robin. And lower down in the bank, maybe a nest of the, the wren. Another thing that is actually quite amazing, even on, on, on the fir bush that we see here, the diversity of little organisms, whether it be spiders or mites or flies or um, caterpillars, different trees will have different quantities and so on and so forth. And we may not see them with our own eye, but the birds, they, whether it be the blue tit or the coal tit or the sparrows, uh, they're in there and they're foraging for them. These were originally, of course, uh, beautiful flowers and they needed to be pollinated. They needed to be pollinated to produce the lovely food uh, for the different creatures that are going to be using the hedgerows. It could be the birds, it could be the badgers, it could be pine martens, uh, you know, or as I mentioned earlier, the, the migrating visiting birds. So that diverse range of pollinators from bumblebees to, to hoverflies to even moths and butterflies and I even learned that the, even the beetles have, uh, can do a little bit of pollinating as well so they are all uh, contributing hugely to this uh, bounty of food. It's actually amazing that those pollinators, you know, when they visit the flower do their, do their duty in terms of transferring the pollen and, and, that, and that I end up with this beautiful produce that's going to keep me going through the winter. And I feel myself from making my observations over the last number of years that uh, it has a certain amount of uh, herbs uh, along the edge of the hedgerow and I think they're starting to move out gradually into, into the meadow. Like for example, I, I see some extra yarrow coming out into the field and uh, some self-heal and, and I, I'm actually very pleased about that because uh, I often see the animals going into the hedgerow foraging for them. The animal knows what it needs uh, in terms of its medicine to a certain extent so I am pleased to see those herbs coming back out into the, into the sward. Sometimes when I'm managing the hedgerow uh, and uh, putting up a little bit of uh, fencing, electric fencing or, or, or even trimming things back a little bit I sometimes course the, 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 the thorny uh, brambles or the dog rose or the, the white thorn or even the black thorn but at the same time I appreciate their, their wildlife value in terms of, of producing the flowers for the pollinators and then the fruit um, emerging following from that and that, that food source of, uh, later on in the season and into the winter time. As, as the day closes in on, on the farm, uh, I'd often see the, the, the bats coming out and about and fluttering around and, and of course uh, the hedgerow corridor is, is, their, is their highway uh, and, and they're, they're hunting there for, for, for moths and, 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 and insects and of course the more diversity I have in that hedgerow, the greater diversity of different moth species are going to be there for those bats. I think that a hedgerow like this on, on the Irish landscape provides a great resource to wildlife, especially in these times when, when so many organisms and creatures, whether it be bird populations or uh, insect populations or even amphibian populations, they're all simply going in the wrong direction. That web of life, as we lose those creatures, that web of life is getting weaker and we are so much dependent on that for, for our own survival.